Hi there, it's Janice Thompson from JazzleDazzleCrafts.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I work in Scotland. Today I've come on to show you how I made this little box. This is a little box that's part of um, this month's kit that I have um, sent out to quite a few people. But I decided to share the tutorial with everyone. And it's free to anyone who wants to use it. Obviously, if you didn't buy my kit, you'll have to buy your own materials. But um, we're using the, why does that always happen to me? Perfect, it's in the kit that everyone got, the Perfectly Played stamp set. And those who elected, in fact, everyone who bought it did actually, um, add on the punch as well, the, the tree punch. It's called, I think it's called the pine tree punch. I wish I would, I'm going to have to label everything because when I'm filming I always forget. But from this suite today what we're actually using is the wrapped and played paper. Now I can let you have, I've maybe let you have a look in one of the other videos but I can let you have a wee quick look at all the paper. This is a six by six designer well, speciality designer series paper because it's got a uh, beautiful foiling in it. I'll let you see. All, all the gold stripes and the plaids, tartans, they are very tartan-esque anyway. I don't think any of them are genuine tartans, but they kind of are look-alike. Beautiful. And then if we turn them over, we've got a whole lot of other patterns on the other side. So we've got, it's not foiled on this side, but you know, to be fair, there's some beautiful patterns. We've got stockings, holly, leaping deer, beautiful polka dot, pine trees, and the thing is, the punch will punch out these trees. How clever is that? You don't even have to stamp to get them. Beautiful tree pattern. Pine cone. There are, is a beautiful pine cone stamp in here as well. And they're a more stylized one. Beautiful stripes in that way and that way. It's like a Regency stripe. Some reindeer. Sort of snowflake type pattern, another polka dot type pattern, so beautiful. So that's that. So what I've got here is, what have I got here? I've got a square that is, and I've cut this from Knight of Navy cardstock and it's three and three quarters of an inch by three and three quarters of an inch. And in the designer series paper, this is sounds a bit complicated, but it, I'll explain it a bit better later. It's three and thirteen sixteenths of an inch. So when you're measuring, no, oh, let me see. What's the easiest way to show you this? Probably on my trimmer. What it is is this is one sixteenth of an inch larger all the way around. So to do your lid, you go to the three and three quarters is there where I cut for the base square and then you go by one more notch which is a sixteenth. So that's the bit you're adding on one sixteenth of an inch all the way around. And it just sounds like an awkward number, thirteen sixteenths. But it's just three sixteenths short of the next inch so it's not once you kind of get your head around it, it's not hard to do so what we're going to do is we're going to score both of these at three quarters of an inch all the way around just get my board in and it's just kind of an awkward i'm still filming with my phone which i'm quite liking doing because i don't like my um, desk be too cluttered but I don't think I've got the ideal stand yet because it's quite low and I can't see what's happening and blah blah. But anyway, three quarters of an inch all the way around. Oh, 
not a wet finger. Not clever. Never mind. So again, on the lid, three quarters of an inch. Just making sure it's flat and in at the right angle properly here. Okay, I'll pop the board out of the way and then bring in my snips and my bone folder and we'll just fold and burnish. Being a bit gentle with the paper, although it is very good quality, you still have to be, when you're using paper rather than cardstock, just a bit, a bit more gentle on your folds. But I want a nice crisp fold here. So that's the lid all done and then we'll do the base. When when you're folding, you fold, see that bit on the bit that you've, when you scored, you scored on that side and then you're going to fold into that so that you've broken your fibres down properly. That gives you a really nice crisp fold. You can be quite firm with that. There you go. So then it's snip and wedge the flap. And snip carefully right up your line and then just cut a wee wedge into the wee flap at the end. You've seen me do this before and then again on this side. Now the reason I made the box this size was, I'll show you what's in this one. Okay, I'll show you. I'll, I'll do the cutting first. Let's not digress just now. Let's do this bit. And when I'm making up the box, I'll tell you what brought me to a box this size. But there's loads of things you could put in this box. So it's actually, it's got a three inch square base and it's three quarters of an inch deep. So there you go. And then the same with the lid. Just cutting your flaps opposite sides from each other, so carefully up your fold line, cut your wedges in just the same as the base. Wedges, the wedges aren't strictly necessary but you'll find you get a much much neater finish. Once you've sort of sussed box making, it's actually quite easy once you've worked it out. Once you've got, if you want a particular size of box, it's not the hardest thing to work out. You just need to know, you know, what measurements you need it to be, and then you need to be able to visualise it flat. So that's, that's you've got your flaps there. And this one so I am going to use wet glue to do this so take the gunk off there so just a bit of that's if I can get it to come out of course I don't want too much so just a bit on each flap And then just very carefully take each corner one at a time. And if you prefer, you can just glue one at a time. And just hold on to it for a second or two. The wet glue gives a really nice, um, strong finish. It really adheres well. Of course, I've got glue all over my fingers now, but never mind. Just take one corner at a time and hold it for a few seconds till it has stuck properly. Take the time to line it all up. 
it really is worth taking some time and being patient when you're doing this. Don't rush it. And the thing is, with the wet glue, it does give you a few seconds to move it a wee bit if you don't feel it's right. That's me. Now, I'll let you see what I've got in this one, and we'll put it in this one now. Is I have. A bar of Scottish natural soap. Now this is a soap that I bought locally and it's actually made locally. It is made by a lady, I'm not quite sure what her first name is but her second name is Campbell and she makes this soap in Deckman which isn't far from me. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to her this is comfrey. It, it's beautiful. It smells gorgeous. It, even dry like this, it feels beautiful. It just feels natural. And she's finished it off with this nice little wee paper band. But I thought I would give it a fancier, make it a bit fancier for gifting. So that lid does fit that box too. But what I'm going to do is sort my own lid. So on this one I've used Night of Navy as the base because the um, paper I chose had some Night of Navy. But that would equally go with the base of this one, which is Shaded Spruce. So, you, you know, you've got a choice of colours. I could have used um, Cherry Cobbler for the base too. I like to keep it all coordinated. So now I need to put a wee bit of glue on the flaps. And then again, same thing. Take your time. And because this square, although you've scored the same, so it's the same depth, now you could have done that a bit shallower if you got changed your measurements, but because it is just slightly bigger, I'm confident it will fit. But just to make sure, what you can do is when you do these bits, you can do it on your box base with something in and that way you can be much more confident that it fits because well you've got it over it okay so then you don't come that when you finish making your lid in your base and find they don't fit together that fits perfectly now just a little trick here is I want so that I can slide it on and off we can use the wee I think this is big enough the wee um, punch. This is a wee half inch punch. And just take out just a wee finger space there. That's nice, isn't it? And oh, this one, I mean, this will fit over, well, it should fit over here. It fitted over the other box. The belly band can go over there and that looks fine but I thought I would for this box I would use the ribbon that goes with this suite except I don't know where I put it I had it here before I started filming I got it out to show you of course yeah it's right here okay whoops how beautiful is that? And it's got gold, it's the shaded spruce and it's got gold in it too, so it goes quite nicely. So, I don't know, I'm just going to cut off a length of it. I'll use it for something. Let's see how we go here. So, do it that way. I like to do a bit of fancy here. 
I think this is way too long, but... See what I mean? You can... Look, I've got ribbon stuck to my finger now. So I can tie a huge bow here. How does that look? That looks pretty grand, doesn't it? Quite like an oversized bow. And then this one, this one, will, the belly band will now be too big because the soap is slightly raised. But um, anyway, the soap's in this one. So there you go, what do you think? Was that an easy box to make? I've tied this one up with ribbon. This one has belly band. Obviously it's the wrong size because the soap is deeper. If you see what I mean, it's it, it makes the box sit, the lid sit proud of the base a bit. But that, that works fine. So, you know, a nice gift and then I can make a tag. When there are enough things in the kit that everybody got to make some tags. So, you know, I could tie a tag on here. A matching tag, which is quite nice. So, the tags are quite obvious how they've made. I'm not going to do a video for the tags. I'm sure you can work that one out. But I will, there will be videos for the other cards as well that are in the kit. They'll be coming up in the next few days. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Thank you to all who bought my kits. I really, really appreciate your support. Um, it's what keeps my business going. Um, if, if I didn't have customers then... I wouldn't be able to keep doing this. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And for all the encouraging comments. And please give me your feedback on your kit. If there's anything you think I can improve on. Um, and if you, you know, let me know. And particularly let me know if you feel that, you know, that you think you've got good value for money. I, I personally think you have. But um, you let me know what you think. Anyway. Thank you. Please subscribe. Please share my videos with anyone you think would be interested. And if you've had a kit and you've enjoyed it, please let other people know um, and encourage other people to buy them too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye.